Robert Sillerman, who created a company called SFX, decided that he was going to buy up the concert promoters in the United States and merge them together. He kept saying that uh, concert promoting business was the only American business of, of its size that hadn't been merged and conglomerated, that hadn't been raided by Wall Street. And then he found out what I knew for a long time, the companies that he bought and merged together had been rivals and arch enemies for 20 to 25 years. They hated each other's guts. Giving somebody $35 million, putting them in a room with 25 people that they hate, and giving them $150,000 a year to work is not a good business model. They did not want to work together. They all had so much cash at home that the salary that they were getting paid did not motivate them to come into the office. And it was a huge, huge fiasco. It didn't work on any, any way, shape, and form. After figuring this out, he decided to sell it to Clear Channel Radio and he touted the synergy between the concert promoters and the synergy between the radio stations as a reason for Clear Channel Radio to buy his company for I believe four billion dollars and I believe what he put out to buy all of the companies was about two billion dollars. So he made a huge amount of money for two or three years worth of work and the speculation was that uh, you know he, he already had Clear Channel set up as a buyer that he would not have put out that much money if he didn't have a buyer. During that time period the concert promoting company lost billions of dollars and it lost so much money that Clear Channel stock was less than their competitors who had a fraction of the radio stations. So Clear Channel Radio tried to sell Clear Channel concerts for about two and a half years but nobody wanted to buy a company that lost four billion dollars and you know five or six years, so they were incapable of selling it to anybody on the planet. So they said, oh, we're going to spin off our new company and call it Live Nation. And if you look at all of these press releases that were put out, they made it sound like this spin-off thing was this brilliant brainchild of theirs that was going to, you know, manufacture money from the sky. In part two, why are concert tickets so jacked? And why, despite this, is Live Nation still a bad investment?